All right, so today we're going on a road trip. We are taking our slurry tanker away to get our dribble bar fitted. It's point just not telling you now because you've already seen the title of this video so you know what we're getting done. We're on our way into our local town of Coot Hill to pick up our new Mass Tech seven and a half meter dribble bar. I have the tank already all cleaned up. I opened the back door yesterday to have a look to make sure there was no silt or grit built up. There wasn't a single bit of grit in it. It was actually really, really clean inside. So I didn't have to do anything there. I just had to close the door and leave it as it was. But I did do a couple of things to the tanker yesterday when I was working on it. I tightened this up here, put new bolts on here because it was just hanging. They do get loose after a while. I put a new fella on here for hooking on your spread plate, although we won't be using our spread plate, but if you want to hook on a pipe or something onto the back of it, you're able to do that because this lollipop goes on the back of the dribble bar so the dribble bar will be attached onto the back door and then this here will be reattached onto the back of the dribble bar the one i had on that originally was completely rotten it was all holes the top of it here was all caved in you put your finger through it so it was time to change that plus i tighten this one here up as well it's more solid now and everything's greased up and working freely and um, i put a new pressure clock up there as well not that you really use that often but look at they're not really that expensive and i just said i'll throw a new pressure clock on it just to have everything working greased everything up the wide angle shaft checked all the oil levels i actually changed the oil in the gearbox and um, put new oil into it so the guys at mass tech i spoke to them and i asked them when we're getting this fitted i want to be able to film the whole thing being fitted i don't want to just leave it in and pick it up because that's what they really wanted me to do just leave it in and pick it up but i didn't want to do that i wanted to pick a day where i could go in stay with it even it's cold and windy and raining i want to be fit to stay with it just so you guys could see the whole procedure if you're thinking about buying one for yourself so without talking any more about it we're going to jump on the seven six and we're going to head for good hill So we are here at Mass Tech. Mass Tech is in my local town of Coot Hill. It's very breezy here at the minute and we're hoping the wind doesn't get too bad because I want to get the drone up and show you the scale of this place. 
because we are in a small little alley at the minute. And that there is all packed with slurry, macerators, pipes, you name it, it's all there. And we are just surrounded by sheds and dribble bars. We'll hopefully show you all that as we go through today's video. I'm just waiting for my dribble bar to come up. And when it comes up, I'm gonna back in my own tank that's sitting there and get ready to fit. Just in the shed here now, and this is Shane that's going to be fitting our Thank double bar today. And just going to talk through what the first thing you do with your tank because every tank is more or less the same on the back. So, Shane, what's the first thing you do before you start fitting? The first thing we do is we take off our gear files, yeah, front and back, and yeah. our double. Yeah, now some have a third or second gear file here or a water fitting. Unfortunately, this one's attached to it, so it'll be staying, won't interfere with those loads of clearance. So take off the door uh, and make sure it's well cleaned out inside before you put up to it. We're just here we're waiting for our tank to get fitted up with this double bar and we're here with Noel from Mass Tech. How's it going? Uh, Noel Markey from Mass Tech here. We have a lot of double bars here in front of us. These would be all uh, sold already like they're all orders yeah. that are in for, for uh, customers and they'll be going out in the next probably two weeks. And you see they're all different openings so you're obviously for a lot of different tanks. Yeah every every different tank um, has a different size back door yeah. so there's not a tank yet that we haven't been fit to make a double bar for. So the likes of this one here is for a red rock. Okay. It's an eight meter dribble bar, just to take you through a couple of them. Yeah. So here you have a Mastec one, which is actually for our own tanks, Belmac, and then you have a Rossmore. That's a very big opening there. Yes, which some lads don't even think it's possible to put a dribble bar on. Okay. And so what we do with a Rossmore is we get the customer, as you'll see here, where they've welded the fill pint shut. So we get the customer to send up their own back door. We strip the back door. We weld our spaceship, as we call it, to the back door and then the double bar is assembled as part of their original back door, galvanised again. Another red rock. What's the print here for? That's so just to let you know which so model. 20 inch, which is the size of the back door, red rock and 8 metre. On so 8 metre. It's an 8 metre um, yes. double bar. Yeah. Uh, then we're on to our shoe, our micro shoe. Wouldn't be as popular as the dribble bar because it's not a retrofittable uh, machine. For these machines, they'll fit on the back door, but for this one, it has to go on to a four pint linkage. Yeah. And the reason for that is, so this is 650 kilos, yeah. whereas they're only 420 kilos. Yeah. Plus the fact that when you let down that shoe, you will have ground pressure on every spring, six to seven kilos of ground pressure on every spring, and there's 28 springs. Okay. So that's adding friction as it's going up the field as well. Bolts on here onto plates that are pre-existing on the tank which Mastec can adapt. So if it's an Abbey tank, we can match from Abbey to our bracket, or a high spec, we can match from high spec to our bracket. So that's the bolts then at the bottom, and then at the top then you have two top links, and they're just stabilizing the machine yeah. when it's fitted. So now we're on to now the umbilical systems. Yes. Um, so what are we looking at here? So what we're looking at here is a 12 meter twin macerator machine. It has proven very popular because you have a macerator on each arm. Yeah. So when you fold out your arms, your view out the back window is not prohibited. You know, you can see perfectly out the back window. Okay. Plus the fact that you can have headland management. When you get to the top of the field, you can switch off one macerator and have the other one running so that you're not destroying the headland on its way around. The load sensing uh, valve chest built onto it. So you're working with toggle switches inside in the cab. So for every, every sequence, so your arms, your macerator, it's, it's all on load sensing, so it's only taking the oil from the tractor as it's required. This machine will match up with any of our reels, uh, 1000 meter, 800 meter, and also the 600 meter if needed. This is a new, new rock tank, a local contractor. So 
here we have our 12 meter uh, hybrid vertical dribble valve and it's been chassis mounted to the back of a 4000 gallon new rock tank and um, it bolts on here with six uh, 20 mil bolts each side yeah and then at the top it's just a stabilizing point just to steady the machine up also on this machine there's a breakaway as standard it's done through a hydraulic accumulator so it'll reset every time if you hit something or unfortunate enough to hit something and it works like this and pushes the oil back into the back end of the tractor on a free flow return pipe so the slurry is fed from the back of the tank and it's fed into this junction box as we call it and your existing fill points and splash plate are bolted onto this junction box so you can either feed up into the mass right or you can have a quick release fitting here which will bring you to your splash plate oh yeah and also on the junction box you have a stone trap down here oh yeah 24 yeah. spanner lift it off and tighten it back up it's that's it all yeah. cleaned out What do we have here? This is going off to Cavan. It's uh, going to a uh, customer in Cavan, yeah. yeah. So it's going yeah. to the Cavan show first, and then yeah. it's the customer picking up from the Cavan show. Yeah. So we have a 10 meter uh, vertical mass tech driven back, and we have an 800 meter reel on the back of it, yeah. and a 600 meter front reel on the front. So they can carry 1400 meters of umbilical hose. That's a lot of hose. Yeah, a lot of hose. The same breakaway as what we looked at in the tank end of it. So it's done through a hydraulic accumulator, free flow into the back end. Single mass rate on machine, very simple setup, ideally get started in umbilical. This is something new that I've come up with. Um, it's nice and compact and it looks a real good solid system. You have your petrol engine in there and you have your whole system key start here. That's a nice engine. <laughs> that is a brute of an engine, alright now in fairness. Another thing I noticed when I was here is the fact that there's a lot of old tanks been left in to get done. Like tanks that are 20 plus years old. So people aren't fearing, like myself, putting on an older tank. Because I was kind of wondering myself, is it worth putting it on the Abbey that I have? But my other way of thinking is, I'll probably end up buying another Abbey tank. I'll probably be committed to buying another Abbey tank now, now that I have that dribble bar. So it doesn't bother me putting on an old tank because I could get 5 to 10 years still out of that tank. I'm optimistic about that. But if I get five years, I'll be still happy. So this obviously getting a chassis mounted dribble wrapper on it. That's a brand new tank. When I came to price my dribble bar, I think this is the tank that was in the workshop that they're working on. That is one incredible tank. So you have your fill point here. Coming out to the side instead. Some lump of machine now. I know where this one's going. I know where that one's going. I know that tank. So the fella that's probably watching this too probably says, Oh, you spotted me tank. That's not going too far away from me. A 1600 gallon tank on the smaller wheels. That'd be similar to the tank that I used to have. I love the look of these major tanks, especially galvanized. Just, that's an everlasting job. That'll last for a long, long time. Yeah, it all goes together really, really well. It's not 2000 gallon. Yeah, no, 1600. I was thinking it was a bit small looking. Yeah, nice compact tank. Actually a nice size, a 1600 gallon tank is a nice size of a tank. Come inside out of the wind, it's terribly windy out there. But Noel's going to talk to us a wee bit about the macerator. Macerator itself. So Noel, you fire away there now. Yeah, so this is the Mastec Supercut Macerator. September 2017 at the plough match, we launched this initially. A hydraulic motor is driving around this red axle. Yeah. And inside that then, you have these six blades. Yeah. And the blades are free spinning inside a brass bushing. So you have no grease point. Okay. There's a spring in here then, which is keeping these blades pressed out, again, the two wear plates. And these wear plates are acting as cutting plates as well. So if you look in there, it's like a pair of scissors coming across the hole. So as fibres or that are coming to the hole, that's what's doing your chopping. It'll be in silage and stuff bale like that. silage, bits of wrap. Basically, if, if it gets in front of the blade and it's able to be chopped by that, it will chop it and it'll send it on. But what leaves us unique to anyone else is our air intake. So these are little one-way valves 
and these are taking in air to stop every macerator needs air yeah. to stop it air locking so in in this red side place there's a, a track machined into it so the air joins the slurry on its way out of the macerator yeah which means that it has nothing to do with what's happening inside in the macerator creating vacuum as it's torn yeah it's creating vacuum and but keeps the, the one-way valve keeps the vacuum equal let's say and it lets yeah. the slurry get air and it, for that reason then because every pipe has its own independent air supply it's it's getting the same amount of slurry same amount of air and also on this machine then which was added extra afterwards we put on this isolation block and what the isolation block is doing is it's separating the oil seal and the motor away from the slurry okay so if the seal ever fails and you see slurry coming out this pipe then yeah. you, you know that your seal has gone and then it's time to change your seal between the it just it, it saves the back end of the tractor or any kind it's of it's losing your eye the back end of the tractor exactly. yeah exactly yeah. yeah also have the door on the mass right up uh, this is just half a door but the door slides on on two brackets like that and you just tighten it up with a 24 spanner it's very easily accessible so no then serviceable parts maintenance and that what are you going to have to service in this then over the line so what wears on the mass tech mass rider is your six blades so when you're changing your six blades, you'll also change your cutting plates because they're running again the cutting plate. You'll change your three springs and your six brass bushings. The contractors would be seeing about two years out of these machines without having to do anything with them. Some even more, depending on how busy they are. And that's running a long, that's a long bit of running that's as a, well. That's yeah. a long, long time running. Yeah. Farmers, we haven't had farmers come back yet to replace them. You know, they're not using them only a week a year, like so. It's just we haven't seen it yet. So Shane's just after finishing. Fitting the dirt barn, it didn't take very long at all. Shane's going to walk you through exactly what he did and what will happen to your tank if you come in to get the same job done. But the staff we took off our gear files at the front and yeah. our door, which we no longer need. So we refitted our filler pints and our splash plate back on. You now have an option of a tour or a second one on here or your water fitting. So we ran pipes, three pipes down along with an electric lead. So two of our pipes are coming here along with a switch lead. Yeah. And our tour pipe then is coming to here on a okay. quick release for our splash so, so normally I have the hydraulic change over here but normally in, in most tractors you'd be running out of two spools yes Just, yeah. normally it'd be two spools all we're adding is the extra three pipes so it's yeah. only an extra spool you need so we have two pipes here with green tags on them they go to the solenoid so they will work your arms and mash rail. so the first function is your arms will go down and then our switch which is connected up here that I've put over here and when you flick your switch over, the second function then will run the mass rider. And then on our other pipe we've put in, it will work together along with your original splash plate pipe. Oh. They need to go in because we're running a double acting valve. So you need the two of them. And then if you just need to go splash plating, you're just putting in the one with the red tag. And just a quick release over. And as I throw our fitted now, on the back door end of it, we have our bolts in here. Yeah. you can see yeah and they are taking a weight loading of the weight of the dribble bar which is 420 kilos and then our j bolts are keeping the dribble bar pressed in again the back of the tank we do a backdoor mounted machine and we also do a bracket mounted machine okay but on the back door end of it it's our most popular machine we also sell them into the north of ireland and with going into the north you have to give an engineer's report going with them okay and on the engineer's report then it states that it takes 8.2 ton of pressure before any harm will be done to the back of the tank. And so it's not a problem. No, that's definitely not a problem with that weight. No, no. no. We have a spring-loaded arm, which we always had. So if you're unfortunate enough to clip a drink or, or a post, the arm will fold back about 45 degrees. Okay. So at that stage, you should have yeah. seen it. And you should have broke the post. You know, or... the middle yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's the spring-loaded end of it. On the pipe end of it, see the way the, the red pipe goes into the steel pipe down here? Yeah. So you've no restriction the whole way to the ground. Aye, nothing catching on the end here. Because yeah. Believe it or not, on the older type dribble bars, it was going over the steel pipe and the fibres could catch and it did back up the back pipe. Back up the pipe. So you've no restriction there the whole way to the ground. Okay, free flowing. Free flowing. Then you're back to what she had done, which is your fill pints and your changeover, which you went through that. Then your solenoid changeover. So your solenoid changeover is where you're changing from your arms to your mass rate hall. It cuts down the need for the extra service, but it also leaves it that when you're leaving the field and you put your arms up, it means that your master cannot be spinning because you had to flick the switch flick inside. Flick the switch, it cuts it out so it doesn't run dry. Exactly, because the slurry yeah. keeps it cool inside, which keeps it lubricated, which is the life of your master. Loosen that with a 24 spanner, slide it upwards. Yeah. So if you've, 
you know, cattle bringing in a lot of stone, of pebbles on their feet and all that, you might have to clean that out yeah. every day or so just to keep it right. Like You also have the same type of door on your mass red hot. If you have something in it that shouldn't be in it, and we've definitely heard the stories, it yeah. will come out through that door. Your existing handle on the tank would have been... To the side. The, yeah, to the side. And because when you put on the double bar, the pipes would be hitting off the handle, we weld on a spud down in here. You'll see the spud on that side there because we didn't put any fill point in there. So you can actually change around your existing handle and it leaves it that you're it's clear of all the pipes. Clear of all the pipes. Yeah. I was wondering if you ever have to take it off. God for sake, you ever have to take it off. But if you do have to take it off, um, the wires, I see that he put a, a seven pin plug on it. He did, he, he wired in a seven pin plug. Okay. Look at it in there. Yeah, it's just in there. So if you do have to take off the double bar, you can just plug it out. After someone ports a double bar, there's yeah. a kit that obviously comes with it. So on a kit we have a two small pipes with the green tags, two of them, one long pipe with the red tag. We have our switch loom going down to the vertical valve on your square plug all pre-wired and to a deep plug here all pre-wired up, all ready. Comes with a quick release so the yep. switch can be left in the cab the whole time so it doesn't get destroyed. Yeah. The rain or the elements or like that. Definitely so. We also have a little small bag with our quick release fittings. So we have an adapter, two seals, and the other end, so male and female. And they are to go on to our splash pit. Then onto the other end of the pipe where you've got your adapter, your seal, and your quick release. Right, so we're back home here. Well, it's actually a couple of days later. Um, because I didn't get home till late enough that evening and I had a lot of work to do so I had to get ding dust into that but that's it, that's our mass tech not a complicated thing to fit it took about two hours probably took him less only we were doing a lot of talking and chatting back and forth and having the crack so if Shane had been left alone I reckon he would have put that on in probably about an hour, hour and a half easy he's just so used to doing it and he just knows exactly what he has to do now I would like to say straight out um, when we talked about double bars back a couple of videos ago um, we got a lot of people reaching out to us. One particular company did reach out to us and give us a really good offer on a dribble bar. And I thank them for that. They know who they are. I thank them very much for their offer. But it all comes down to shopping local. Yes, I could have saved quite a few quid going with the other option. But Mastech are local to me. They're well known. They have a great reputation. And I couldn't see myself ever jumping across them to go elsewhere. It just wouldn't seem right. And I know a lot of the lads that work in there too and you might think you're saving a few quid here and there but in the long run you're not winning so i'm happy to go with a local company like Mastech that are well known and have built their business from the ground up and support them by staying with their system the buy-in of this we didn't get a grant for this because we're in a derivation we don't qualify for a grant so we got no grant on this so we have to buy this outright yes Mastech done us a small bit of a discount because we're on youtube and all that kind of crack and you guys are getting to see the product obviously enough but we still had to buy this machine and it is an expensive machine absolutely so i'm hoping we get our value out of it because it's definitely an added expense on a year that's going to be an expensive year but what do you do i could get a contractor in and i will be getting a contractor probably in the springtime to do the piping because our land will just be too wet and um, we'll see how that goes but i did have a tank that i could borrow as well but you have to go borrowing a tank and taking someone else's tank all the time and I hate doing that. I look at the guy I get it off, it's generous, he'd always give it to you but you hate asking, if you get what I mean, you hate asking people. And if I wanted to go out just to spread a two load maybe on a paddock, you have to go off, get a tank and come back. Just got thinking about it, it doesn't make a difference if I buy it this year or next year or the year after, I'm going to have to buy one and that's just that, my hands are tight so we have no other choice. It's always nervous when you take out something you've never used before and hoping that it'll work but I'm hoping it will. The only worry I'd have is this tank here with bales of silage and even at home cattle to drag the bales in on the slats there's very little you can do to stop that look we'll see how it goes that is our mass tech double bar so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to set the camera up and i'm just going to show you it folded out so ours is a 7.5 meter double bar and um, that's probably roughly around what we were getting with our spread plate and um, so we're not losing any ground there so Eamon Ryan be over the moon with this I must send him a post now and tell him I 
I'm doing a bit for the environment. But in all seriousness, I did see how well the field is done after Jonathan came in and done the double bar work before because I don't know if you remember a video when I done half that field with a spread pit and the other half with the double bar. We definitely seen a much, much better response from the parts we're done with the double bar. And as our winters seem to be getting a little milder, they definitely have been the last few years. We all see that our silage fields, it's hard to see it from now, but there's a lot of cover on our silage fields out there. And if the ground was dry and you could go out, you wouldn't like to go out with a splash pit and spread any slurry on top of that. So the dribble bar works well for that. But another thing it works really well is the fact now, especially with myself, who runs a tight enough um, grazing platform and this keeps cows moving fairly, fairly quickly. This is not going to hold me up really because beforehand I was very weary of going out and putting any slurry on, on paddocks. I'd make sure it was very, very watery and rain was coming fairly soon afterwards to wash it in. But this here should kind of allow me to do more of that um, because you're not covering the whole leaf of the grass. It doesn't contaminate the grass as much and that's a plus. So look, at it does have them pluses. They work well on a dairy based platform for us. That's where I see the advantages of that. But we will get it out. We're not going to do anything with it today because there's no point in putting slurry on the cement and there's certainly no way we could go into any of our fields because we had a deluge of rain. They are starting to soak up, but it's going to need a bit of time yet. But we will get it out. We will get drone footage and everything showing how it's working and over the entire year and give us our opinion then on it at the end of the year and let you know what we really think of it. And Mass Tech, like loads of other companies, got the same warning from me as everybody else got. I like to tell it like it is, and I will give my honest opinion on it when we do use it, but I can't see any reason why there'd be a problem. Look, they're out a long time now, and people seem to like them, so there you go. I have to thank Mass Tech, especially Paul, for allowing us to go into his place and show the actual machine being fitted. Normally, a lot of this stuff isn't even fitted on site. It's fitting the dealerships um, before your tank goes out, or a new tank, or whatever it is you're buying. So it's nice to be able to go in. I wanted to show you guys how the thing is fitted. If you're thinking about buying one for yourself, at least, you might see something you didn't know before. So that's it, I'm gonna leave it there for now. Before I do go, we are running a limited offer on our merch store, and we're running a green hoodie and a green polo shirt, just especially for St. Patrick's Day. So you wanna go over and check it out in our store, it's there. We did post it on our Instagram, there are pictures of it as well. So check that out if you want. Folks, I'm gonna leave it there for now. Thanks very much for watching as always. If you like what you see, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and until the next one, we'll talk to you again.